Hey guys, Wally Renee here, doing a quick tutorial on mirror image feature in Romexis uh, Plan Cat Easy. Quick tip, if you put your tip on and it's not giving you that yellow heating indicator, just wipe it real quick with the alcohol prep pad. Wipe the little connectors, um, kind of rub it. You could use a pencil eraser, but I just find alcohol to be better. And then you should see that glow yellow indicating that it's heated up. This is, um, by the way, this is a really kind of a not ideal case. This tooth was prepped by no less than, I think, 10 different dental students um, over the course of a year and a half. I don't know what was going on, but it came to me like this in the um, dental undergrad aesthetic clinic. And so we're just going to roll with it and <clears throat> take a quick little scan and see if we could design something that's going to be useful for this patient on this particular tooth. I think the ling lingual finish line is three millimeters or so subgingival and I think the rationale I don't know the rationale of getting <clears throat> that that low with the students I think it was possibly trying to maintain a feral around this tiny little buildup but nevertheless this is kind of what we're up against here with this kind of overprepared lingual margin that is also two sub G so let's go ahead and just render this really quick um, and like I said this video is real time so it's gonna be a little slow because I've been in the past, people have been upset that I went too fast, so we'll just kind of keep it real. Um, we do have remarkably fast render times compared to almost every other CAD software that I've ever had the pleasure of using. So, um, you know, 15 seconds versus sometimes two to three minutes, depending on the, the software. Now, that, <clears throat> that color can be accentuated, the contrast can be altered and manipulated to better see that. And you'll, you're, you're going to see what we mark the margin. It's going to be pretty clear. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and copy that into the upper. That was scanned in the pre-op, and we just copied it over into the upper folder. And now we're going to go to the lower. And once again, there's me manipulating the color to get it to kind of more where I like it from my eyes. Now, the lower scan... Um, Nothing special. With the new software update, it doesn't really matter how you scan or hold the camera. If you're running older software, you can't just scan any old way. So, But with the new software update, I find it doesn't really matter. Active delete to get rid of all these tissue tags that I accidentally scanned when the lip just folded up over the teeth. So you can see there are some artificial intelligence um, removal of soft tissue. All right, so once again, our super fast model render times of like 10 seconds, and then we are now on to the lower. The um, lower bite scan is just basically a zigzag. Slow it down, it's not supposed to be a super fast scan because you gotta give that computer time to mathematically combine the upper and the lower to the meshes. So it's not like a super fast scan in my hands, it's just kind of a slow paced scan, as you can see there. So now we're kind of moving on. And I think what you're gonna notice is that this design is gonna be remarkably simple. So orientation, setting the path of insertion, kind of looking straight down at that tooth. And now we're gonna to attempt to try to mark our margin. Um, we kind of barbecued tissue a little bit, trying to get it out of the way. What happened was, and this is kind of super common, we had a ill-fitting temporary on this tooth for I don't even know how long and the tissue, in other words, the temp was short of the margin. So the tissue completely overgrew the margin everywhere. And so when the student went and refined their prep, like you couldn't see that lingual like that, how the tissue was kind of over it by five miles and just learning experiences for the student and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes this happens in the clinic where I'm seeing the case for the first time after, like I said, it's been prepped by like 10 different faculty and students and you just have to kind of go with it. <clears throat> this is an endodontically treated tooth. Okay, so now we're gonna circle the contralateral cuspid. Notice how it has that huge kind of facial embrasure with that very prominent peak um, in that middle lobe with almost a Cupid's bow effect for this tooth. It's just a super bizarre anatomy. And so what we get now in the plan tab is a skin, a shell of that tooth that you could just manipulate, rotate, move, resize, anything that you want, but it maintains that kind of 
odd anatomy, uh, which is really helpful. <clears throat> I like that it gives you this ability to manipulate the skin. Some softwares don't, and it kind of looks twisted and weird. Um, but the thing I like about this particular mirror feature is it lets you edit the skin. So now you can see here we're at design and look at this is what we initially get. A little smooth tool here or there. This is real time, um, not sped up at all. I'm just kind of <clears throat> going to smooth that out down there. I'm hoping the we don't have a biologic width issue there, that we're not encroaching on the bone. Um, it's a little suspect in my mind, so we'll have to see how the patient heals there. They might need a little bit of osteous removal, we'll see. But we're pretty much almost done with the design. Um, look at that, that was 10 seconds. Check the occlusion here. I'm gonna see that I'm just a smidge long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of manipulate that tooth and just bump it up a little bit. And then I'm going to come from the lingual view and just kind of use dropper negative. <clears throat> so um, dropper does go down to negative, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go dropper, drag that down, and just kind of zip it a little bit. I like to have like a blue, um, black almost contact, so very light there. Yeah, something like pinky black. By the time I glaze it, that's going to be just perfect occlusion there. And with his end on occlusion and kind of odd open bite, that's the best we're going to hope for for this guy. Noticing I'm a little thin on the facial, so I'm just going to just quickly bump that out. I think we have one of the best morph tools that doesn't distort the anatomy. It's just, I think it's the best out of any software I've used. That and the smooth tool, I think, is just the most... Um, the best out of any software. So here's the final result. He did want us to match his posterior crowns because I think uh, he said when he's saving up, he wants to do all of his anteriors. Who knows when that will be? This is probably a one tooth at a time kind of thing, a one tooth a year maybe kind of thing with his finances and things like that. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something and let's do some more of these. I think it's kind of fun to show real, real world cases that are not ideal.